Good morning, Internet. Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, guys. I uh, hope you guys are all doing great. This is EJ, uh, once again, with another narrated time-lapse video. Um, once again, I'm back with a narrated time-lapse video. Let me rephrase that. Um, today, we are taking a look at an old video of mine that I uploaded earlier on in 2019 that I'm now we uploading with commentary uh, first time i uploaded it, it did not have commentary and now it does so yay <laughs> that's that's cool that's awesome um this was a speed paint that i did for the daily sketch group of conceptart.org i talk a lot about concept.art.org um fortunately the site is not around anymore so for anyone who ever tries to venture out onto conceptart.org unfortunately it is not there anymore so I, I do miss the site um, there were quite a few great activities uh, to be found in that site um, and again one of the activities was the daily sketch group it's a forum they post daily uh, prompts and this is one of the prompts that got posted and the prompt, the prompt for this artwork was very, very long, and I'm pretty sure that I'm gonna butcher it because I don't remember exactly what the prompt was. But if I'm not wrong, the prompt was a declining fairy tale that features a centaur, a griffin, and other magical creatures i think is how the title ended or how the prompt ended it's a very long prompt um it, it could have also have been a rapidly declining fairy tale that features a centaur a griffin and some elves or something i'm not sure but i know uh, i know a bunch of magical creatures got mentioned on the prompt and so really the most important part of the prompt that i remember was the rapidly declining fairy tale that was the part that got stuck in my head the most and so when i created this artwork you know i kind of asked myself how am i gonna <laughs> describe this prompt or how am i gonna illustrate this prompt and the one thing that came to my head is of this image of a king and a queen and they're basically experiencing some legal issues some legal problems i mean that's kind of like what the image illustrates you know there's this uh the griffin is this lawyer dude who comes in with a police officer that's a centaur and you can tell that the queen is reading like this paper or this document of some sort and it looks very legalistic it looks like she just got served essentially you know maybe she got subpoenaed or something to a lawsuit um it was never ever really clear in my head you know um <clears throat> sorry excuse me so that was one of the that was one of the things that came to my head was basically the king and the queen are experiencing some form of legal dispute legal issues legal problems and so their fairy tale is about to end essentially you know um the image can also be interpreted as maybe they're being foreclosed or something maybe they fell behind in mortgage payments on their mansion palace or whatnot now it's being closed down and so they're being kicked out <laughs> so not quite sure what you know idea i was really going for all i know was that i needed to feature all those magical creatures that got mentioned in a prompt so i at least get the center in at least i got the griffin in i i got the dwarves i honestly thought that the prompt says else but for some odd reason i drew dwarves i'm not sure why so i got some dwarves so you know i got a good gist of the prompt pretty much in there um so yeah i think this is kind of like a very good interpretation to that prompt you know um because essentially i mean if you look at the image it's pretty much a rapidly declining fairy tale i mean poor guys you know legal problems so yeah but uh now that i got the description now let's talk about what is going on in the video 
And in the past five minutes, I did a quick sketch to kind of lay the foundation of the painting in. Um, so they're basically in the front lobby of the mansion slash palace slash whatever this could be. And you can see that the centaur and the griffin and all the dwarves are all pretty much at the front door. The dwarves are like grabbing some stuff. They're like taking stuff out um, of the mansion. So I sketched that in um, and it went by real quick. Um, now, one thing that I wanted to mention about this particular illustration is that um, this is the first time that I started doing this whole two-tone Mike Mignola uh, lassoing kind of effect. And I think I mentioned this before in, in previous videos. But basically what I do um, to start things out is to really cut up my um, composition into a dark and light and just to just basically just those two values you know so in in this particular uh painting you could see that the dark is obviously the blue and then the light is this light brown now i'm cutting up some more shapes and adding some more uh colors in there i'll explain those later but really what i wanted to highlight was the blue and the brown um, I start doing this a lot in a lot of my illustrations to kind of start me out just so that I could focus in on the light area and know where the majority of my detailing will happen. Um, this is actually a very good advice for you guys out there. I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, you know, the 30-70 ratio or the 60-40 ratio or the 80-20 ratio is pretty, it's pretty much like those three. You know, you could alternate between those three. But the idea is that, you know, in any given illustration, you have 80% that it's like left loose and then 20% super detailed. Or, you know, 70% loose details and then 30% super details. You don't ever want to do 100% super details because if you do 100 super details or 100% super details, you just get so busy um, and everything just becomes hard to read. I experienced that problem in one of my illustrations, Spot in Tarot, which is actually in my portfolio. Um, I have to basically dial that illustration down. Like I had to redo a good portion of that illustration because I was running into that over detailing problem. So it's a good rule to kind of think of 80%, 20%, 70%, 30%, 60%, 40%. I learned that from a bunch of people at conceptart.org. And I wish I could credit who it was that gave me that idea. I, I knew that I was in a thread talking about over detailing and they mentioned that. And I wish I could credit him now. But again, unfortunately, the forum is not there anymore. So I cannot check who it was that gave me the idea. But anyways, going back to this whole two-tone thing, it kind of helps me, you know, figure out my composition in accordance to those rules, the whole 80, 20, 70, 30, yada, da, 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 you know. So in this particular composition, you could pretty much say that everything seems to be cut up in a 60, 40 percent ratio. 60 percent is in the dark. 40 percent is at light. Or maybe you could even say 65, 35. Um, but I knew that the majority of the details is going to be on the characters. Even though that the light area is around 35 to 40%, really, if you take a look at that light area, maybe only half of it is the one I really need to detail. The floor is in the light area and the outside part is in the light area but you can tell that I didn't really put a whole lot of anything in those areas anyways so really the main detailing will happen with the characters and so that's the reason why I started doing this whole cut up my composition into this two-tone thing because it kind of sets me up to get a good idea on how to value my time essentially you know 
with that dark blue area on you, they were going to be in dark anyway. So I, I know that I could do my detailing zoom out in that case. And you'll see me do that like later on in the video. When I start detailing the background, I'm pretty much zoom out. And I pretty much, I'm like, I, I don't need to zoom in because I know that I'm going to leave the details loose in that area. You know, and I didn't really zoom in until I started working on the characters. So, um, so yeah, great piece of advice um, is the whole rule that I just mentioned. And uh, on whether or not you want to do the whole two tone thing, it's up to you. I see a lot of people. I, I've seen actually one other artist that does that frequently. Um, there's this guy named Nidaru, I think is his name. I'm forgetting him right now. I'm unfortunately not in front of my the website. Um, but yes, if I'm not wrong, his name is Nidaru. And I ran into him in Facebook's uh, daily spit paint group. He does a lot of comic um, speed paints. Um, he takes the prompt and does comics out of it. And to simplify things and to make things faster, he does this whole two-tone thing, which he does very well. Um, I have to give him props, like major props to you. And I hope I pronounce your name right, because, yeah, I just hope I pronounce your name right. Um, but yeah, that's something that you guys can do or you don't have to do. Uh, it's all totally up to you. This is something that I do that kind of helps me. So, yeah. And another thing that I wanted to make note of with this particular um, illustration is the fact that, you know, yeah, this is the first time I started doing that whole two-tone thing. And if we look back at the video, I don't know if you guys noticed that, you know, in order for me to do the whole two-tone thing, I basically used the lasso tool to make my selection of the light and the dark. And... I wanted to highlight the whole lasso tool because there are quite a lot of speed painters who use the lasso tools very effectively in in their artwork. Um, I wanted to highlight Ate Gailin and Jordan Grimmer. I wanted to highlight those two because they have videos on YouTube that you guys could take a look at and see how effectively they use the lasso tool for speed painting. Um, I use the lasso tool to, you know, delineate my two tone, but really apart from that, I don't really use the lasso tool aside from that because I have a huge tendency to blend. So when it comes to doing the whole lasso tool painting style that Ati Gallin, Jordan Grimmer, and another one that's really popular that I think he does this style, I'm not sure because I haven't seen videos of his, Jeremy Finsk. Finks, I think is his name. He's an art station. Um, they, he also looks like he does the lasso tools, um, the lasso tool painting style. So uh, I guess that's the way I could describe the style. I can't think of any way, any other way to describe the style. But yeah, check those people out. Andy Daro at uh, Facebook's Daily East Bay Paint Group. He does he does the whole lasso thing too. I. From what I can tell, uh, I haven't seen a video of his either. So, but yeah, I think it does. But anyways, going back to the whole lasso tool thing, this is actually another great, good technique to help speed up speed paint. I personally don't practice it. I'm not very good and effective at practicing it, and not, and I'm not very good and effective at at uh, deploying it. Um, for me, I, I just really love the whole smudging blending thing. I've actually been criticized about the overblending. Like some people think like I kind of overblend too much for a speed paint. Because the whole idea of the speed paint is to leave it loose, leave it, leave the brush strokes in, you know, like basically like a, an impressionist painting, you know, where you could tell what the what the brush strokes are and what the marks are. The deal with this whole smudgy thing that I do, that I love, that I like, it, it doesn't, it kind of destroys that, you know, and doesn't really leave the whole brushwork intact. And so I've been criticized that I overblend too much for my speed paint, you know. Um, the end product, though, I mean, it's up to you guys to decide if you guys like the end product. For me, depending on what the speed paint is, 
I like it. You know, there are some speed paints where, yeah, I will agree, like, doing the whole overblending thing was just too much and it didn't work out. And, yeah, it, you know, my speed paints are ugly. And I think I've already mentioned this in other videos, too, where when it comes to speed paints, I'm really iffy about it. You know, like, uh, sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. Like, I do a lot of speed paints, but the ones that I put in my portfolio are, like, like the cream of the cream the cream of the cream the top of the top you know like i jury my speed paints like crazy i don't just rush them to my portfolio because because i just i just i just jury it you know um what can i say you know some of my speed paints are just horrid that i just don't want to put in them out there all the time but anyways my point my point i'm trying to make with the whole uh this pea paint thing is that I've been criticized for this whole blending thing and in hindsight part of me like yeah maybe I should try and do the whole Atti Guilin Jordan Grimmer approach of just doing the whole lasso thing you know maybe I could experiment some more with it but part of me kind of don't want to because I like this blending thing you know, I mean, when it comes to the time factor anyways, it does. I don't feel like it impacts my time at all. I mean, for this particular piece, for example, I mean, I still landed at 2 hours 40 minutes, something like that. Um, I, I knew, I know that I'm under 3 hours in this one. And I've mentioned this heavily before, my speed paint typically ranges around 2 to 3 hours. Um, sometimes 5, which I feel is too long. And one hour, you know, are, as I've mentioned before, my one hour speed paints are like hit and miss, with a lot of them being a miss. Um, but yeah, I mean, doing a quick blend like I do in this particular painting, I don't really feel like it hurts my time at all. So when it comes to speed paint and the actual time factor in itself, I figured, hey, why not? <laughs> you know, um, even though in essence it does kind of destroy the brush strokes and some people feel like it's not a speed paint if if it's too blended too much i don't know it's <laughs> i don't really know <laughs> i'm okay with it i'm happy with it if it's successful i'll just let it be so but anyways uh so those are just some points i guess i wanted to cover um and talk about and whatnot um so yeah <laughs> okay i guess to sum up <laughs> my whole point in that whole conversation is that i'm okay with the whole blending thing and i'll just keep doing it and in some cases i will try to preserve as much as i can the brushwork that people love in the whole speed paint genre so but now that i got that done and over with talking about that let's talk about the painting because seriously i didn't really get the chance to talk about uh what happened in the painting i'm gonna go back and mention the other lasso selection that i that i made um so i lassoed the background and put blue as the dark area light brown is the light area and then i started doing um lassoing on a few things which i think i lassoed the window because i really wanted to preserve the shape of the window and i lassoed the characters and basically the reason why i did those two things was just so that i could have a quick selection to select those there's a way actually in krita for me to set up selection masks to where I don't even have to do what I did, where I don't have to, you know, make a selection and then, you know, make a new layer and make that layer a solid color or whatnot. Like I didn't actually have to go through all of those steps because um, there's actually a way to just make selection masks like uh, much easier, a much easier approach to doing selection masks. I, on the other hand, just seems to find this visually easier for me, you know? Because, I mean, I see the color and like, oh yeah, those are the characters. So I just select it with the magic lasso tool. So there's a visual component for why I do it and why I like doing it. 
even though <laughs> setting it up takes a a lot or a much longer uh but yeah so that's what those selections are um i quit doing this actually you know for the most part most of the most of my speed paint just start out with the two-tone now i don't do the whole extra step of selecting areas that i want to highlight um unless there's like a special case for that illustration so so yeah um but yeah as soon as i had made all those lasso selection tools or as soon as i had made all those lasso selections and covered them up in color the next step that i did was um you saw me take a photo and kind of just put it on top of everything and basically what i did with that photo is that using the two-tone the dark and the light i used the magic lasso tool to select the light area and when that's highlighted i went back to that photo that layer with the photo and pump up the curves in that one and then did an invert so that it's selecting like dark areas of the illustration and then i pumped down the curves in that one and then i put like the image into like 50 25 percent um and whatnot and then i painted on another layer just like a bunch of colors real quick like it, it didn't even take me that long maybe like five minutes or so but anyways the whole point of the image is basically it's just extra color information which sometimes i do it I, I was doing it quite a lot in 2018 and early on in 2019 this year but i kind of slowed down on it um sometimes i will do it sometimes i won't but the whole point of having the image in there is just to have some extra color information that i didn't intend essentially you know um you could see that my color choices were pretty much purple all throughout this illustration but if it weren't for that image that i photo bashed in i wouldn't have gotten the the greens i think the greens and the browns and reds i i think those were all those all kind of came in through the photo um so yeah but once i got all of those in like the that photo bash photo and that layer of really quick paint where I just put a bunch of colors in. Um, what I did next is of course merge them all into one layer together with my outline and smudge everything again into recognizable shapes. And then as soon as I have this soup of colors that has readable shapes in it, that's the part where I start detailing, which has happened quite a few minutes back um like right now we're i'm developing the characters uh so you didn't really get the chance to see me um or i didn't really get the chance to talk about me uh detailing the background because it's pretty much done and over with but it was really quick though you know it was just kind of just me again you know delineating my edges adding my accentuating my shadows and adding my highlights so so yeah.
So this illustration is pretty much close to getting finished. Um, so just like I mentioned, pretty much this is just the detailing part, which, you know, as I mentioned before, is one of my favorite stages, one of my favorite parts, one of my favorite stages in an illustration. So um, I guess I could talk real quick about uh, how I feel about the piece, whether it's successful or not. Um, I feel that all the characters are easily readable. They're, you know, you could tell what, what's going on. Um, you could tell what's up. The only two things that, or the only thing that really kind of bothers me are some proportion issues. Like I feel that the queen and the king are way too short, uh, or that I made their heads too big. Um, I guess I was trying to go for like a cartoon look, but then it, I ended up making them look like they're little kids or little children. So that's kind of off. Like I kind of don't like it. Um, but for the most part, everything you know works uh there's kind of muddiness going on um this is uh, one thing that i've been struggling with some, some of my speed paints is sometimes that my colors get really really muddy sometimes the muddiness are effective sometimes they're not um it is your call whether the muddiness of the colors is successful in this one um i think it's all right you know um i don't essentially think that it's the best the color scheme wise everything seems to work you know everything seems to be this desaturated brown for the most part and then you get the major characters all in blues and purples uh semi-successful um still something i'm trying to work on with my speed paint but you know um uh, yeah i guess it's just something that i need practice on overall but yeah, uh, so far altogether, I, I feel like this was a semi-successful illustration. Like I'm, I'm really happy how it came out. I, I remember thinking that I was excited over it. So yeah, uh, I was glad. Thank you guys for watching this. I will see you guys in the next video. Good night.